Hello and welcome to the Arizona Express. My name is Seth Graham. Today we have with us film industry professional Terry Donnelly. Hello Terry, hey, welcome to the show. Seth, thanks for having me. Great having you. Uh, in your 40-year career, what, are, what kind of films have you worked on during that time? What, one or two or how many, how many have you done? Uh, uh, well, <laughs> upwards of a hundred, a oh. uh, hundred different projects. Feature films, television miniseries, television movies of the week, episodic shows, upwards of a hundred shows uh, that I can recall. How did you get into the film industry? Well, you know, it's funny. I, I really had no desire to go into the film business. I, my, my intention was I graduated from Villanova University with a degree in political science in 1962. And I had every intention of going into the Foreign Service and serving my country. I had a commitment, a three-year naval, naval officer commitment. So in 1965, I got out of the Navy. I had a wife and two babies, and I needed a job. But there weren't any jobs available in the Foreign Service at that time. Fortunately, I had an uncle that was in the film business back in New York, and he got me into an interview with a famous director, a guy named Joseph L. Mankiewicz, All About Eve Academy Award, and he hired me. He hired me as his chair boy. Hmm. My job was to make sure that director's chair was under his butt every time he sat down, and I kind of became a good chair boy, but I got to look around that set and said, maybe this not, might not be such a bad career after all, and of course the rest was history. That's great. Did you fluff it? Did you fluff the pillow? What's the no, I didn't. I didn't have to do that. I just stuck it just under stuck his it butt, you know, an ample butt that he had. It was. <laughs> <laughs> what are some? Uh, what are some that you enjoy the most? Some films you might have just you know come back to memory. I I served as an assistant director, as a unit production manager, and as a producer. And frankly, one of my favorite my my favorite position was that of uh, as an AD because I got to really contribute to the filmmaking process. Let's look at some pictures here of uh, some films you've worked on. Yeah. I think among them are your favorites now. Uh, These are some of uh, your hot shorts here. Yeah, that was a little hot that day on this beach at Malibu. That's actually Natalie Wood uh, a few months before she passed away. And uh, that's a picture called Willie and Phil that we did that Paul Mazursky directed. All right. I think we're going to have another photo here. No, whoa. Bar Looks like Bar Barbara Streisand. You don't, want, you don't want her to fall. Barbara was, uh, her character had to climb down a fire pole in this film called All Night Long we did at Universal. And uh, she depended on me to uh, keep her from uh, falling on her butt. Uh, so I kind of taught her how to, how to climb down the fire pole. Good job to have. Let's look at another. On the left, that's Sven Niekvist, who uh, recently passed away, actually. He was Ingmar Bergman's uh, cinematographer, but he was working with Paul Mazursky on that Willie and Phil picture back in uh, the New York location, and that's me on the right. And that picture's in full HD, right? It is indeed, yes. Mm -hmm. Black and white, but full, full HD. Here's a picture I'm most proud of. This is a remake of 12 Angry Men we did in 1998 with uh, Jack Lemmon, as you see, George C. Scott, Hume Cronin, Jimmy Gandolfini from The Sopranos, and eight other wonderful actors of the period. And I was fortunate to be nominated for an Emmy Award for the best television picture for 1998 for this remake. Yeah, they, they, put, they look pretty upset in that picture still. Yeah, indeed. What are some of the toughest parts of the film industry that you find? Well, you know, what I have found re recently is that um, politics has really reared its ugly head in, in our industry. It's often difficult to, uh, to get things done in, in the filmmaking world and the filmmaking business these days because, frankly, the, uh, the young people that are running the business are, are not as well trained as they used to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's often difficult for us old fogies to be able to make our, make our creative points with some of, these, th some of these young Turks that really don't really deserve to be in the positions they're at. Maybe a, maybe a left hook might convince them. Uh, <laughs> well, well, we'll be right back. Uh, Terry, you join us and we'll have you more, few more questions for you. You bet. All right.
What's the biggest mistake you find young filmmakers make? You know, Seth, the biggest problem with young filmmakers today is they don't recognize the fact that they have fiscal responsibility, regardless of what position or what career path they've taken. Director, cinematographer, art director, everyone has a certain amount of responsibility towards helping the producer bring the picture in for a, a decent cost, because it is a business. It used to be considered, when I first started, it used to be considered more of an art form, but today the, the, the bean counter is a rule in the roost, so we really have to be all very conscious of our fiscal responsibility. So what do you think is the key survival in this industry of, you know, money and... Well, you know, I often tell my students there's three things that they need to be successful in this industry. Talent, perseverance, and motivation. But not necessarily in that order. There are a lot of talented people out there that don't have the motivation or the perseverance to, to make it. But if all three qualities, I guarantee you, you'll, you'll be successful in this industry. So what, what advice would you give to a young filmmaker who's just, who's just diving in so they don't, so they don't drown, so they survive? What well, they need to, to dive into the, the deep end of the pool for sure. And, and also they need to have a certain modicum of, of patience. And being able to stand rejection is another uh, very important quality that young people have to have. It, it's often easy to give up, you know, when you've gotten a couple of rejections. But the fact of the matter is this small industry, that we, relatively small industry that we have, there's relatively few jobs. But if you can, as a young filmmaker coming into an entry-level position in the industry today, if you can impress somebody new every single day, you're going to be successful in, in this business, I guarantee it. Well, not brown nosing you're saying, but just impress them with your talent. Absolutely. Okay. Now, now, Terry, it's just me and you here. There's nobody else around. What are some inside things? What are some things that happen on the set that just uh, well, you know, a lot the, of people don't know about? The, the easiest uh, story that I can tell, because uh, a lot of things happened on, while we made The Exorcist in 1973, but uh, William Freakin, the director, always liked to use real people in some of the roles in the film as opposed to using actors, which often was fraught with problems. And one uh, evening we were shooting a scene where, where Jason Miller, who played Father Karras in the movie, is found dead at the bottom of the stairs in Georgetown. And his friend, Father Dyer, comes to give him the last rites. Well, Father Dyer was a real Jesuit priest. Father Bill O'Malley was his name. Actually, I became good friends with him. And Bill was not much of an actor, frankly. And Mr. Friedkin, after take 10 of trying to get this reaction from Father Dyer, he went in and slapped him right over the face. He got the reaction he wanted, but I was brought up a young Irish Catholic kid. It <laughs> just shocked the heck out of me. So that was a, a, a bit of, a, a, of an oddity that, uh, that happened as a result of Friedkin's uh, liking to, to hire real people to play actors' roles. That sounds like a sin to me. I don't know. It's like a <laughs> priest. Well... Thank you for joining us tonight. It's been great. Uh, if you want more information on Terry Donnelly, you can check him out on IBMD.com. You also can go to search Terry A. Donnelly. And also he has his own website at motionpicturebudget.com. Again, thank you for joining us. Have a great night, guys. Thanks, Seth. Terry. <laughs>